my friends. How are you today? I am doing well. Let's hope today's recording is better than yesterday's. If you happen to jump on yesterday, that baby froze all over the place. I have a, <laughs> a whole story on why I think everything was happening the way it did, but you know, it's all good. Today we are talking about our fur babies and you might find out a little more about me, things you may not have known. And I'm hoping you don't judge me because I am a pet lover. I am like hardcore, um, the, the pets are my thing. We, through the years, have had many different dogs. We've had cats, we've had rabbits, uh, we have had rats, we have had gerbils, we've had hamsters, we've had lizards, we've had birds, and they live long, beautiful lives. We've probably had other critters that I didn't know about uh, through the years. Just, it, it's been a thing with we've got four kids, and they're all animal lovers. And all of these beautiful animals lived in our home. We loved them, we cared for them, and we would get them from baby or from a mutt that came home with somebody or a cat that just stopped, never stopped coming over and became our own cat. Just um, animals to me bring so much joy. They're a part of life. And this past year, uh, we got a puppy um, she was seven weeks old, eight weeks old when we got her. She's now right around a year old and she's just amazing. She's a boxer pet. Love her to death. Have had an amazing time getting to know her and her personality. And the dog that we had had before her, she was 15 years old, she passed away this past year. So there was the emotion that we went through with that. And um, animals are just, they're a part of who we are. And right now we just have the one puppy although she's technically not considered a puppy anymore. And it, it, it is, it's been different transitioning from all the animals that we've had through the years to just having the one and realizing how much I dote on her. Because you know, all the kids are out of the home now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm one of those crazy old ladies that takes my baby with me. And uh, she gets so, many, so much different than when we had 52 animals and um, the kids around, right? But we also have my grand puppies. So my daughters both work here in the office for us. They do different things. And so um, I get to see my two granddaughters four days a week. One is three, one is 10 months. They're over here, um, like I said, four days a week. And she brings her dog with her. She's got a big old white, gorgeous baby pit bull. Um, she's not even a baby anymore. She's like almost four. And she's my grand puppy. I get to see her four days a week. And I know that's weird for some of you. You're like, grand puppy, Shannon, come on, you're going too far. But this is our world. This is like who we are. And then my other daughter, who also works here in the office, um, comes over four days a week, different than my other. They've got a couple, they overlap. But she now has a puppy, a golden retriever that is so sweet. One of my team members, puppies had, a dog had puppies and she was able to get her Gosh, she might be three and a half, four months old now. But I get the joy of being around my grand puppies and my grandbabies and all the different things. Our family is really, really close. So there's some things that I do for my dog, for my fur baby, that I also do for theirs so that they're on the same cycle. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of that. And today as I'm talking and I'm sharing, some of it you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's old news. I totally knew that. Who doesn't know that? Well, I'm here to tell you common sense is not very common anymore. And like, I cannot, I cannot handle watching those TV shows where they're showing you them going in and rescuing animals. It breaks my heart. I can't fathom, I can't fathom anybody hurting any type of an animal. I don't, I don't a chicken to a pig to a, it don't matter to me. There's, there's no reason to not do some basics. So as weird as it is, I'll only do it for a couple seconds. I'm going to go over some basics. So I don't know, you could be a brand new pet owner. Maybe you're one of the people, you know, over 70% of the people in the United States have pets. That's, that kind of blew my mind when I was doing some research for this class. Like, holy smokes, 90 million <laughs> families have pets of some sort. So that could be anything. In today's class, I'm only talking about our furry puppy, our cats and dogs primarily, but most of that can transition over to things like our, our rats, our gerbils, our guinea pigs. Oh my gosh. And, and we love that all of them. I'm going to give you some things you shouldn't do and some things you for sure can do and get rid of some of the myths. And I'm going to pretend like you are brand new and you do not know how to take care of a pet. Like you don't got, you don't got that common sense. I'm going to give you a little. So first of all, it is summertime. 
we have to make sure that our pets are getting enough hydration. Just like you don't drink enough, I know you don't, don't tell me you do. Just like you don't drink and you get dehydrated, so do our critters. And when they're dehydrated, they don't feel good. They don't wanna run around and play. They get hot really, really easy and they don't wanna do anything. If you're like, my dog just lays around, my cat doesn't do anything. Make sure you're checking on their hydration. Make sure that their bowl is clean. That needs to be clean on a regular basis. You do know that bacteria builds up. Just like, you know, I this is my water glass. All it will ever have in here is water and essential oils. But this gets cleaned every single day. I clean this, I clean my straw. Because if I don't, bacteria can build up and then I'm drinking it. And most people don't even notice the flavor of the bacteria because you have become so used to drinking out of dirty containers. But we have to make sure our critters have clean containers. Wash their water bowl, wash their food bowl, wash the mat that it's on, just regular, basically making sure that's done. You'll find they'll drink a little more. And then I'm gonna give you something that some of you might think is a little controversial. It's put a pinch of real sea salt in their water. And by a pinch, I literally mean just a little pinch. If they were out in nature, if they were having to fend for themselves, when they drank, it would be out of creeks, it would be out of um, all the different natural water sources, and those water sources would naturally come with some minerals. Our babies need that. It also helps with that hydration, helps keep their electrolytes balanced. We have to make sure we're taking care of them from every one of those different directions. So make sure they've got water, make sure it's clean. And then um, realize that they need shade. When they're outside, they get hot. It's so funny. We're out by the pool every single day. I just love being out there. And all of our dogs will come out there and they'll run around, chase each other when they um, all get together and they're having a really good time. But as soon as they're done running and chasing, they either want to play in the water because we have an area for them, a splash pad. I told you my babies are spoiled. So we got that and they'll go over and want that turned on. Or they will individually, all three of them, find a spot in the shade. So one goes under the playscape that we have for my granddaughters. One likes to literally, she'll go right inside the house so she can see all of us. But she's inside because she's like, it's hot. I won't be out here anymore. Uh, but they need that shade. So if your animals are outside animals, make sure they have a place of shade. Don't just put them on a on a chain or, or in a fenced in area and not give them a way where they can get out of the shade. If they are out there all day long and that's all that they do, you have outdoor animals, that's okay, but you should also make sure there's, again, their source of water is there, a shaded area, and honestly, some fan type thing to keep the, the wind moving when it needs to be. So you got barns, you know you, you take care of you. Um, and I wanna say when you're, Make sure I'm hitting on my basics. So I think that's all the basics that I wanted to hit on, but I also want to go over this. So when you start to incorporate, I use essential oils on our dogs, our, our cats. Geez, I used them on our rat. I used them on, what else did we have during that process? We used them on our rabbits. We used them on pretty much all of our animals. I'm not going to go into lizards or, or birds or anything today. It's the the furry guys. But you have to understand that animals have a really strong sense of smell. Right? So if they can smell from a, you know, 10 feet away, 20 feet away, they can, they can smell, then we have to introduce oils um, gently. So one of the first things that you can do is make sure you're using oils on you before you ever start using them on your animal because it becomes familiar. And you might find when you put your oils on, they back away from you. It's because their, their nose is learning how to, how they feel about that aroma. And you're gonna find just like you, I don't like the smell of oregano and I don't like the smell of lavender. Two oils I don't care for. I've been in Young Living for almost 15 years, still don't like them. I have preferences. Your animals are going to have preference. So if I share an oil with you and you, you're like, I tried it on my dog and she didn't like it, that's okay. Just incorporate slowly. Again, use them on you first. So even our animal sense oils that we're going to talk about, you can use those on you. All, all of our kids' oils can be used on everybody. All of our baby oils on everybody. And all of our animal oils can be used on everybody. And you can use all of our regular oils that aren't labeled for animals. You can use those on everybody as well. So our animal line, we're gonna go into, but what I recommend is using them on you, using them on your feet, using them in the diffuser while your animal gets used to it. 
And then your first way that you're gonna put oils on your animal is A, after it's been on you and then the diffuser. And I'm not talking for 10 minutes. I'm talking give them a couple of days to get used to it, maybe even a couple of weeks to get used to it if they've never used it. But then what you do is you put a couple drops in your own hand and you rub it around. This is how I recommend doing it on babies as well. So this is all on me, right? <sighs> Stress away. Um, it's one of those, right? But you're going to take it, you're going to let it um, off gas for a little bit. So I'm going to give this a minute or two, and then I will pet my puppy on their little booty. I'll pet them on their little belly. I'll pet their little legs. I won't go anywhere near their face. I want them to be able to get away from it when they need to. And it's just petting. I might even just start with the tail, depending on how much they dislike or like the oils. And it's just on my own hands. So I'm not taking my oils in the beginning and putting it right down their back and rubbing it in, which we'll talk about that. I'm not putting it directly on their paws, nowhere. I'm putting it on my hands and letting it off gas. If that still seems to be too much for them and they're pulling away from it, um, you can do where you put a little bit of V6 in your hand, vegetable oil, and then put that one drop, do the same thing, rub it in, get most of it off of you, because the V6 will tone down that aroma, it will dilute it a little bit. All of our animal oils come pre-diluted, but that will give another step away from it. So that's one of the things that you can do for it. Um, uh, make sure I'm hitting everything, start slow, one drop at a time. Uh, uh, I will give this, okay. So there's so many people out there saying that you can't use oils on cats and you can't use all of these things you can't do. I want you to know if it's if it makes you uncomfortable and you got a kitty cat, don't put citrus oils right on your cat. I will tell you my cat, we diffused everything and my cat lived to 19 years, my dog lived to 15 years that were really inundated. My dog's name was actually Peppermint. We called her Pepper because we got her right after we got into Young Living. So her entire life she was a part of Young Living from the time we got her. She was like a year and a half when we got her. So it, it is perfectly fine. Like I said, my cat lived to 19. We diffused oils. I put stuff on them. I didn't worry about that. But if it causes you concern, if you've read the thing, you're like, oh my God, they can have it, they're dog sick. Then do, don't do that one. Use other ones. There's enough other options. You don't have to worry about it. I will give this kvetch, this point. If you're using something that is a blend of lots of oils and it has a citrus or it has something that um, would ordinarily give you that red flag, understand the amount that's in here, it's probably perfectly, perfectly fine. So, but again, if it makes you nervous, I tell this to all my pregnant mamas, if something makes you nervous, that's okay. Don't use it. There's enough other options, but it is fine. There's so much um, misinformation that you're going to see out there. So. Again, the common sense things, common sense isn't so common. I wouldn't lock any of my animals in a room with the diffuser going full blast so that they can't get away. You're, you're always wanting to give your animal a way to get away from the aroma if they don't like it. So I wouldn't have my cat in a small office like this and have my diffuser blaring thieves oil straight for you know 12 hours. I, I wouldn't do that to my animals. So use your common sense along the progress. Um, but you'll see some good things that happen. Tell me, what am I dealing with as far as who I'm talking to? Do I have cat owners? Do I have dog owners? Do I have other rat owners? We had a lot of rats, gerbils, and hamsters through the years. What are you? Are you a horse person, bird person? Tell me the things. That way maybe I can gear some of what I'm doing. I'm trying to look down at the comments as we're chit-chatting. Tell me your thing so I know who I'm talking about. Oh, what else do we have? Again, not going to be talking about fish, not going to talk about birds or um, lizards, snakes, none of that's going to happen. And then if you have any thoughts or questions, you can always ask your vet. But remember, your vet doesn't work with essential oils. It's not their specialty. And I'm not going to share anything with you that could hurt somebody else's baby. Like, it's my thing. I, I have done it or used it or been around it, that's why I feel comfortable sharing. I will tell you this, um, with our uh, rats specifically, we had an experience where, because we diffuse a diffuser in every single room, and never had any problem with the diffuser, but we got the resin burner. This was many, many years ago when it first came out, and a resin burner, you put the Frankincense resin in it, and it's a smoke that comes out of there. It's, it's amazing. Like I use it in the kitchen next to my fruit so that we didn't ever have any issues with the creepy crawlies that you know fly around your house. That's one of the things that works really well for us. But at the time, 
So we're our big, we have a big stand that we've got all of our fruits and vegetables on and I had the resin burner directly between it and the other wall, so just around the corner there, we had this huge cage where our rat did. I don't know if you know, but rats will continue to grow pretty much as long as they've got enough space. So we had this huge thing, all these climbing things and he was like oh, five or six at the time, like really old for a rat. Anyways, we would diff put turn that resin f uh, diffuser on couple times a day just put it on 10-15 minutes it does its thing and it keeps everything well well we noticed that my rat would kind of look drunk I'm like what is going on with my rat kind of, and and anyways the research we found out that's part of what they used to use in the temples and they um, did incense that burned all the time and part of it was because what it did for mice and rats and all the stuff that would try to get into the tents the resin burning that smoke would eliminate the the mice and the different things so i found out with my rat i had to move her to a completely different area in our house because i still needed to use my resin burner because i needed it by my fruits right but um i thought that was really fascinating so my diffuser never caused a problem for him never we were able to we just diffused frankincense and it didn't cause a problem but boy i put that resin burner on and my baby would get all drunk and laid back i'm like oh my gosh so just something for you to know. And I would assume, now I didn't have gerbils or hamsters or guinea pigs at the same time, uh, but I would assume it would react kind of the same way for them. So try it, see what happens <laughs> if they look like they're high. Maybe don't use that one around them. Oh my goodness. So water, making sure that, can I say this? I'm not gonna go deep in this, but I need you to do some research on the kibble, the stuff that you are feeding your animals. I need you to research just Okay, let's just say food color. I know it's 60 minutes in and I'm supposed to be quick today, but can I tell you, nobody, nothing, no human, no animal, none of us need food coloring. The science behind the dangers and the food coloring is cray cray. So if the food you are feeding your critters has food coloring, like I'm, that's the only one I'm talking about. There's so much more on the toxins that are in there. But if it has the food coloring, please take that. Make a choice that the next time you buy your food, you're gonna make sure it doesn't at least have the food coloring. Food coloring is so bad for the liver, it's bad for the kidneys, it's bad. And your animal, you know what? If it's a dog, they're 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 pretty much colorblind anyways. So they see different shades of gray. So it doesn't matter if it's got all the color the colors in there for you. So that when you're putting down their kibble or their treats, treats are really packed with those food colorings. This again goes to that common sense thing. Just, just think about that. Just do a little bit of research. I'm not gonna tell you to go, you know, all raw, all the things, that's totally on you. But do a little research. If you can eliminate one thing from their, their life, food coloring is a really good thing. And you know what, I'm gonna say that for you. If, if all you chose to do when you go through your cupboards is choose to get rid of food colorings, you'll see you get rid of a good 80% of the garbage and all those other chemicals kind of go in line with that because the things that are adding the food color, it's in there because it's convincing you that we eat with our, our eyes first. I'm just saying, uh, clean water, we already did that. I did it out of order, making sure they get to exercise and move around and they have lots of places, blah, 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 physical touch. Um, even if your animals are backyard animals and you have them in cages and stuff, one of my friends, Diane Parrish, has a pet chicken. Yes, I said pet chicken. She lives in the house with her. She's on the couch with her. She, she shows all these different pictures because they, they love that touch. So how many of my chicken lovers are out there in your critter, your little chickens love all that kind of physical touch? There's some good things that we can do that are, that are gonna help. But we as, as people, as our animals, we need touch, it's good. So take that few minutes, even if you're just so busy and you've got 52 kids and your life is full, know that your, your, your fur babies, they need that little bit of attention. So they're not trying to annoy you, they're trying to fill their needs. So wouldn't it be great if we could have all of our needs filled, right? That's what they're asking you. That's what they're trying to do. So do a little bit of that. They also need time alone. They need to be able to get away, especially so with this weekend coming up with 4th of July, people go to parties, they're at things, they have people over their house, they have all this loud music going on, and then you got the fireworks at the end of the evening. That is so hard on our animals. It's a massive change from their regular life. Most animals, their regular life is mom, dad, a couple of kids, and that's their rag, right? But this is a massive change. You have other people around, which is, is hard on our pets. I know you're like, but they love people for a minute. 
as long as you have a way that they can get away, especially if you're dealing with other kids being around. My my dog, she is she's she's one, so she clearly loves being around all the grandbabies. But I always have another space where she can run away to, where she can go lay down, so she can get away from them, so she doesn't nip or she doesn't bark or she doesn't get frustrated. That nipping, nip barking, that stuff is her way of communicating. Please stop. But a three-year-old doesn't know that. But you, as an adult, you do. Just give them a space to get away. And that is same if you've got a ton of people coming over. Have a space where they know if, if they're not kennel trained where they can go in their kennel, then, then have a space. So like my bedroom is, okay, don't judge me. My dog sleeps in my bed with me. Um, with my husband, he gets to be there too. But um, so she always is able to go in there, cuddle up underneath my blankets, and it's, it's her getaway. Same thing here in the office. Um, underneath me, I've got a bunch of blankets where she'll lay on the blankets and be with me. But if the kids are over and she's had enough, she comes back, she just comes right into the office and curls up under there because it's a safe place for her to get away. So think about that. The noises, y'all, you know how we said their sense of smell is so much stronger? Their sense of hearing is the same. That's why they can hear the UPS person, you know, six minutes before you do, because they can hear it coming. So we have to honor that with all of these noises. There's things that you can do to make it where they're calmer. Um, like if you, we live out in the boonies now, so I don't have this issue with the fireworks and stuff anymore, but for in the past living with my critters, we did lots of things. One of the things that we did is we made sure probably around five o'clock on 4th of July, Memorial Day, New Year's, all the times when you're gonna hear fireworks and stuff, we would make sure that we had our radio on and our window shut. So if it was hot, we would do the air that day because it seals the outside noise away and that music, our bass music, gives a bass sound for our critters so that it's not suddenly all of this stuff happening. So we would, we would protect them as much as we could. And then we use oils that really help to calm them down. If they get anxious with the sound, some animals don't like the thunder, different things. So some of the ones that I like to use is our TOA, which we'll talk, about, talk about in a minute. That's one of our animal scents. But some basic ones I bet you have on hand right now, things like our peace and calming. Peace and calming is phenomenal. Again, put it on your hands, shush them out, and then put it on their little tail, Put it on their little belly, maybe around the back of the ears, because it, it helps them to calm down just like it helps you. You can do the same thing with things like Valor. Um, although if you have a white dog, I have been told, it will give a little bit of a blue hue to their skin. So if you've got a white puppy, not their skin, their fur, just heads up. I don't care if my doggy would have had a little bit of blue if it calmed her down, but Valor is a good one. Stress away, the one I just did just now, it's amazing because it helps them to relax and a lot of times they would just sleep right through all of the chaos. So I didn't wait till the chaos started. I think that's part of the problem most people do with their animals. They wait until they're freaking out and then they're like, come on, calm down. And they have a hard time, just like you, have a hard time calming down in the middle of stress. These help, but start ahead of time. You know fireworks are going to happen. You know the neighbors, you live in an apartment complex, you know they're going to have a party and it's going to get loud. Set up a, a protection beforehand. Close the windows, turn the air on, have basic music or, or your TV, and then get those oils out. If, if you really can't touch them with the oils because they're not fond of them yet, throw them in your diffuser. So make sure that that aroma is still there. It's still calming, still peaceful. You don't have to use all of them. Use whichever ones your little heart desires. Those are some things you can do to prepare your critters so they can handle it better. Um, another thing that my husband used to, we lived um, uh, in when we first got in Young Living on the east side of Flint. It's kind of noisy, like all the time. And my husband basically trained loud noises so that our dogs, our dog, dogs at the time could get used to the loud noises so he would um, be outside and he would use fireworks and he would use even when they weren't you know firecrackers so that there was a treat that was involved so the loud noise would happen a treat would happen back and forth and he would do that throughout the year because we lived in a 
lived in a sketchy neighborhood, y'all. And so we just, we didn't want it to freak her out or make it hard on them. I had one that was really sensitive to that. So those are little things that we did. And everything I'm sharing with you is actually on a PowerPoint. So if you are somebody that likes to teach the classes or you need to be able to read all the things that I'm saying, you can go to Shannon Hudson YL and you can pull them up. I'm just looking at my PowerPoints with the notes right here while we're talking. Uh, so the other one that I was talking about is our tea away. That is our, um, I want you to think trauma. So loud noises are traumatic for dogs, right? Big changes are traumatic for cats. Cats do not like, <laughs> cats have an attitude, you know they do. In the T away, I want you to just think of the word trauma to help them to be able to, to channel it a little bit better. So our T away, all of our animal sense oils, first of all, they're all in stock. I went and checked that first but all of them are pre-diluted for our animals. So you can use them straight. So once your animal is used to you doing a little petting of them and doing that, there's lots of ways you can do it. My favorite is a spray bottle. I like to mix the oils with a little spray bottle, spray lid on it, and you can just put a sprayer right on it so that you can spray it on and just rub it all in and you can get their belly really good and I find that convenient. Other people like to put a little roll-on lid. I've always had animals that have really thick care so the roll-ons were a little bit more difficult for me to really get it in there but like um, right now I have my the puppy that we have is a pit bull boxer the parents one was a pit bull one was a boxer but she is super teeny tiny and petite with no hair um, very little hair fur um, so the roll-on would probably work for her so you do what works for you the other way that I would use all of these oils we're talking about and I do this uh, once a week, actually every single uh, Thursday, all of my, my puppy and my grand puppies are all here. So I treat everybody and I use um, baking powder. So I take baking powder and I put some of these oils we're going to talk about, but you could do it with anything. I will tell you the ratios. I take the baking powder, I throw the oils in there and I squish them in really good. So think about if you were working with flour and you dropped a drop of water, you would see like a, a round wet spot in your flour. Then when you're working your oils into that baking powder, you wanna do it till it's super fine and you don't see any of the, the chunks of where the liquid has hit the flour because what it does is it emulsifies the oil into the baking powder. So I could add the baking powder oil mixture to my bath and that um, oil would go through the entire bath instead of floating on the top of the water. So if you're if you're using oils in your bath, baking powder first, baking soda, I'm sorry y'all, baking soda, and then you're gonna put that in there. And so what I do is I put, um, every Thursday, I make a big old batch of baking soda and I put purification, uh, citronella, sometimes Melrose, depending on what's happening, and I put it all in this powder. I mix it up really good. I put it in a Parmesan cheese shaker, you know, the you can buy from Amazon. It's got the little holes in the top. And what I do is I shake that all over my puppy, my dogs, and I rub it from right behind their snout back, and I go behind their ears, I go around their neck, their belly, their back, their tail, their feet. And then they head outside and I do the next dog. So I do all three of the dogs and then I do any of the places that they lay. So like I said, my dog is underneath my um, table here. She has a spot out in the living room. She's up on the couch with us and I sprinkle all those areas. I sprinkle my bed. Um, I sprinkle anywhere that they go regularly. So like I said, we live in the boonies, but we have a fenced area for our animals and our children, our grandkids rather, so they can go outside, play, run, and we don't have to have them on a leash. And so I don't do my entire yard, it's, it's big, but I do all around the fence line because we have raccoons and you know, chipmunks, all the things, and I don't want any of the stuff that's on them to come into my yard. So by doing this, it keeps her, we don't have to worry about fleas or ticks or any of those things. It just keeps their fur super clean and I don't have to worry about doing any of the chewables or, or the collars or any of the things. It's just a once a week quick treatment that we do. So I sprinkle it in all those areas in her bed area. We just shake out the blankets afterwards and then we vacuum on my couch and on my bed. We actually vacuum the stuff back up in the bed and we vacuum it off the couch, but we leave it all around the yard. It takes me, oh, 20 minutes to do all three animals, sprinkle around the yard, sprinkle in all the areas, but it keeps it all clean. But you can use baking powder as a, um, as a holder for any of the oils. So with the long hair dogs, 
because you know I've gone through that our golden retriever puppy it's a great way because that powder just gets right down in there it gets in by their skin and so it's just protective it stays there and the animals absolutely love it for them it is just pet cuddle time with Gigi and they're they're down they just love the whole process so with the tea away that we're talking about Tea Away is a blend of tangerine, lavender, royal Hawaiian sandalwood, German chamomile, frankincense, valerian, ylang ylang, black spruce, geranium, divana, orange, rue, heliochrysum, hyssop, Spanish sage, patchouli, coriander, blue tansy, bergamot, rose, lemon, jasmine, a Roman chamomile, and palma rosa. This is so calming all of those stressors all of those things that our animals just because they don't know I can explain to my three-year-old granddaughter the fireworks that I can show her that's where the noise is coming from I can't do that for my puppies I can't do that for when things change or if I have to go on a trip and I'm gonna be gone this is one that I like diffused for her while I'm gone my other kids are here but my dog is used to me that's my baby that's a, that's traumatic for her and I know they sound like little traumas but we can make it so much easier on our, our animals or if they get hurt when they have to go to if you have an animal that just stresses when you have to go to the vet or in the car or any of those places that tea away like I said just in your head mark down this is for when they're going through something traumatic so it's not like you know a car hit them although that would be traumatic and emotional too whenever you think of something that would be traumatic for their little bodies it's a phenomenal, just a phenomenal one to go to. Then we have PuraClean, P-U-R-I, Clean. That's another one of our Animal Sense oils. And this is a part of a like three-part trifecta. And this one is the one that goes in and cleans out the area. So they do get a scrape. They try to climb over the fence and they get a cut. They get the things that happen. Or you're doing their little nails and you get a little nip that happens and there's a little bit of blood. Pure Clean, what I like to do is take it and put 50% water and 50% Pure Clean because I want it to be able to rinse out. That water is going to clean out any garbage while the oils are going to go in and give a little TLC and protect in that area. So the Pure Clean is a blend of patchouli, lavender, mountain savory, palo santo, cystus, which helps with stopping that quick blood flow that's happening, the citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, tea tree all very gentle and protective lavadin and myrtle so this is one that you can just have with you and spray and again if i'm out and about my granddaughter scrapes her knee up i can use that same spray bottle because again that water the important thing if you're mixing an oil with a water is shake it before you spray it shake it spray shake shake spray because water and oil will always separate so i don't want to just spray the water on there i want a mixture so i want to shake it really good right before i put it on there so that is the number one. So they get a boo-boo, you're gonna use that one first to clean all, all of the area. And then you're gonna go to number two, which is our Animal Sense Infect Away. So Infect Away is the one that just keeps it so we don't have to worry about anything else. It's done, it's cleaned out, this is gonna work on that. And it's a blend of myrrh, patchouli, dorado azul, palo santo, Ecuadorian oregano and okatea it's super gentle so even if it is an open wound this is going to be gentle they're not going to get frustrated with it this is another one that I like the spray bottle with it because if I have a boo-boo and I use a roll-on it's going to be sore you can also use a dropper and just drop it right out of it and rub it around um, but it's just phen phenomenal again I like that quick uh, cleansing spritz and if you want you can add a little bit of um, to the water okay so in your water spray bottle if you want to do a little bit of magnesium salt it works like a saline solution um, so you can put the oils directly into that salt and you can squish that around and then put it into the water that will help emulsify it some but I have noticed with my animals when I use the saline they back up a little bit more because I think the salt might burn like they've never said yo mama that burns but by the reaction so I typically don't do the saline but you can do whatever so that would be step two step one step two then we're on to step three step three is gonna be our mend well this is gonna help so it's gonna restore 
really quick. They're gonna they're gonna mend well, right? It's right in the name, and it is a blend of geranium, lavender, hyssop, myrrh, frankincense, zanoki. Like these are some great blends. So this is why I keep saying this is not just for our animals. So that number one is pure clean. That is to clean out the area. Your number two is the infect away. It's gonna defend the area. Then number three is mend well. That's some TLC to the area. And then what I do is I top it with our animal sense ointment. If you have not experienced our animal sense ointment, you have been gypped. Like who uses the animal sense for a thousand things other than for your animals? It's an ointment that is phenomenal. It has a blend. This is the blend. I'm going to tell you what it does afterwards. Palma rosa, carrot seed, geranium, patchouli, um, coriander, melaleuca, our, our tea trees is melaleuca, um, bergamot, rose, ylang ylang, myrrh, and Idaho balsam fir. This is powerhouse. These are amazing for the skin. Animals and people alike, even that little booty rash that your little babies get, this is a great one because it goes in there. It's got all these great healthy fats that moisturize and take care of the skin itself. Then you've got these essential oils that go on there and it like seals it. So if you did step one, step two, step three, and then you sealed it with the animal sense, it works, uh, how would you say, the concept of a band-aid. You put a band-aid over it to keep gunk from getting in. You put that animal sense on there to keep it. If they've got a spot that they're itching constantly or the skin is really, really dry or flaky or what do people call it? Um, like a hot spot, you can do that. But it's also amazing on the soles of their little feet. You know, their pads that can get so dry and people like scrape those off. Just be so careful with your animals. But this animal sense, you can give your baby a little foot massage and just a little on your thumb and then rubbing it on each of the soles of their little, um, their, their pads. Amazing because it's so restorative. So those dried out, cracked, rough, like in the winter time, they accidentally get into the salt, you know, cause they, when they walk on the salt that people put out for the snow, I know you guys in Florida don't know about that, but when we get snow and ice, we sprinkle salt on there to melt it. But when it gets on their little paws, it hurts, it's painful. And this this is something that helps with it. But it's something that y'all, you need for you. So if you've got hot spots on you, you got the nasty cracked feet, you've got um, anywhere, you've got weird, your your elbows have that dried out skin, this is one that you can use on it. It's it's phenomenal. Get it, play with it. You'll love it. You'll you'll never go back. You'll always have it. Another one that we have. So like I said, I use purification or um, citronella on the dogs every single Thursday, right? But we have another one called repeal aroma, repel aroma. So this one is to repel all of the things that bug your critters when they're outside. So you can make a blend using our repel aroma, and it is a blend of citronella, Idaho tansy tea tree and palo santo so it is already pre-mixed ready to go you could literally take put a sprayer on it spray it all over your baby like i said go from the ears back so you don't want to go right on the face ever um, especially for your animals with their sense of smell but you could spray it from behind and get their little booty and make sure you're getting their belly and their little legs great one it's also one you could add to that baking soda just like I do so you can do anything you want I would say um, about two cups of baking soda to about 10 to 20 drops um, depending on where you live like if I lived in the city when we lived in the city I did higher essential oils to that because there were so many other animals that, you know, we go to Animal Park, all the different places. I don't want to have to worry about fleas and critters and things. Like, I don't want that at all. But here, because our yard is fenced in and there's a safety net, I don't go quite as high. So I go, I, I do probably, I probably do about 50 drops. But I'm also doing three animals in a yard. So I put that in the baking soda. I do about five to six cups of baking soda all together. So it's probably the same ratio, but you do you. Then we have one that's called Paragize, P-A-R-A-Gize, Paragize. And our Paragize is super soothing. It's one that you can use on their gut. So you can rub it on their belly. Um, you can do it on their feet. Again, you can, I am a fan of spray bottles for the animals. I don't think I realized how much. Yesterday I was talking about this too, but I like that. Or again, you can use that roller filament. And this is a blend of ginger, 
like ballet, anise, um, peppermint, cumin, spearmint, rosemary, juniper, fennel, lemongrass, patchouli. This is all of that. So let's say you are having to change their food. You're making a decision to have to change their food. This is one that you could rub on a regular basis or brand new puppies. This is one you could rub on their belly before you can do some other things for them. So um, anything that you would think gut wise, that's a good one. You notice they're having some loose stools. You can throw it on. You notice they're constipated. If they're sitting there and they're squatting and then they take a couple steps and they squat and they take a couple, it's because they're not they're not having normal bowel movements. You could rub a little of that on their belly and see if it helps them as well. Also, it's kind of like with your kids when you're, you're not sure what's wrong. You're like, you probably haven't pooped and yet a little bit of paragize is going to help with that. Or if you have tummy dyes on hand or dye dyes on hand or just fennel on hand, you can do any of those. Just again, dilute, put them on your hands first, let the air out and rub it on because the, the animal sense ones are pre-diluted for our puppies, for our kitties, so that they can, they can handle that really easy. Um, the powder that I was talking about where you can take the powder and shake it all over, you can do that on the chickens too. So if you are a child, I said I wasn't gonna do birds, but apparently my friend Diane changed that for me. Now they're pets, um, but you can put that on there. If they're outside, um, you can put that all over and that powder will settle right in because they'll do that in sand. They'll fluff up and get all that sand up on them. Same kind of concept. So you could do that for them as well. I'm just saying. Um, some extras, things that I really encourage you to look at is adding things like our sulfurzyme powder to their food. You might want to start with just a teeny tiny bit because they're not used to that flavor, but they will get used to it. But it's just so good for their, um, it's good for their muscles, it's good for their tendons and their joints, especially if you've got a big dog or any purebred dogs. They tend to have more joint type stuff that happens with them. So putting a little bit in there, you could do, depending on their size, a teaspoon to three teaspoons a day that you can mix in with their food as you work up to it. Our BLM, BLM is bones, ligaments, and muscles. So again, it's giving that TLC that they need. They need things like our mineral essence. I told you our critters, if they were in nature, they would be getting minerals every time they ate, drank, anything, right? It would be a part of their life, but they don't get it. So start with just one drop. And I do mean one, because there's some some flavor in there. So you got that little pinch of salt that we talked about, but then you can add just one drop of mineral, excuse me, mineral essence to their food or their water. And after a day or two, they'll get used to it. They'll go two drops. So I'm not saying dropper fools, I'm saying just one or two drops. Get that working. Same thing for your birds. The minerals, it's just so important. Minerals, there's a whole class on minerals you can go look at. But our animals need it too. Like if you feel like your dog is excessive shedding or thin hair or weird crusty hair or all of those things are going to help. Sulfur time is going to help with the hair as well. And you can give them Ninja Rod. That's massive antioxidants. If <laughs> I know our dogs, our cats, and we think of them as carnivores, like they eat mice, they eat the things, which you gotta realize in the wild, when they're eating those things, you'll also notice that they eat clover and they'll eat the grass and they'll eat the things and it's because they're literally getting some nutrients out of it that their little body needs. So making sure you're giving them a bit of the antioxidants, giving them a bit of the, um, the sulfurzyme, the different things, it's gonna help. Then some honorable mentions on oils that you should have around for your pet. One is cedarwood. Again, cedarwood is so good for the skin and it's something that, it's wood shavings, right? So think cedar closet, all those things, phenomenal. So you could take your cedarwood and you could rub that, again, on their little paws, com com combo that with your animal scents right on their little feet. They're, uh, it, it's powerful. Then Melrose, have it around. I think that is one of those for, again, boo-boo scrapes, abrasions. Just a great one to be able to mix in. Think Mendwell, Melrose. If you got those, you can interchange them. Straight up citronella. It's such an inexpensive oil. It's under 20 bucks, 250 drops. It's great for having outside. You can put it um, in your travel diffuser. So when you're sitting on the patio, you don't get all those no seams and stuff. It's a great one. Our insect repellent that we have is perfectly safe for your animals. So if you took some of that and you rubbed it all over your babies so that they weren't being bugged by things, um, it's phenomenal. It is in a baby of vegetable oil so it might be too um, high fat as far as what it does for their fur but you could use like I said purification citronella any of the oils that are in the insect repellent 
those are things you could add to it. Purification. Purification is um, in the same class as the infect well. Not infect well. Infect away. <laughs> you do not want to well infect things. Um, but purification would be great. P peace and calming. Valor. Stress away. Digize. Copa Eva. You know what I like about the Copa Eva? Is you could put a couple of drops that, of that in their water or their food and they would eat it up because the aroma is almost non-existent, so they won't back away from it. So you can look up all the things that Copa Eva is great for, and you could just add that as a part of their life. Frankincense, it's another one that's really good just to be able to use on your pets. So pretty much what I do is I put oils on me, and I'm with when my Daisy is with me, Daisy's her name, um, I if, if she is near me, I'm rubbing her up. If I try to put oils on my feet or my legs, or even my hands, she will start licking. Like she has had them since the day we brought her home, um, uh, just over a year ago. It was Father's Day, so yeah, just over a year ago. So, anyways, I hope that was helpful. I am sorry it was so long. I really thought this would be a quick <laughs> pet one, but the more I thought about it, the more stuff I wanted you to know. Because you know we gotta love on our pets. And if you found this because some somebody said, oh my gosh, you gotta watch this, get back with them. They, they are gonna be the ones that's gonna help you get all of those different oils. If you found me by accident, you found me on YouTube, whatever, shoot me a message. I can help you get all your goodies and get you started for your critters. Um, anyways, you guys have an amazing 4th of July. We have so much cool stuff coming up and in-person stuff. I'm actually gonna post my calendar in both of the team areas and we have a water challenge that we're doing there's an inner beauty challenge if you're doing the collagen if you want to be added to any of that stuff comment um add me add me and i will make sure that we get you added to both of those challenges that are going um if you feel like you're not a part of anything and you want to be a part of stuff say i want to be a part and we will get back with you and help you do that if you're already in the stuff so you're already doing the inner beauty challenge say i'm already in let me know how it's going how many of you were already starting i started as soon as i got my collagen because i'm like oh all this stuff so let me know if you already started what you're doing anyways i love you guys i appreciate you all so much and i will be on i think i'm on every day this week actually i got all kinds of things i want to talk about all right guys talk to you later bye